Michael, you and I are here at Notre Dame, this conference on the quest for consonants, um, theology and the natural sciences. Uh, you're an atheist. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to have one of me. I, don't I, think. See. I suspect if you scratch, you'll find somebody who, who believes the Bible literally as well, <laughs> yeah. who's a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got, we got both ends uh, covered. Uh, so d d define your end. Uh, uh, some people tell me that uh, you know people who are who are real atheists uh, are more aggravated with you because you attend <laughs> yes. conferences like this. <laughs> yes, well, that, that, that's absolutely true. But it, of course, this is the thing, isn't it? It's almost like uh, quantum entanglement. <laughs> You've got the fundamentalist uh, Christians on the one hand, and so somehow you have to create <laughs> the rabid atheists right. at the other. I mean, right. they they don't talk to each other, but information right. is passed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you've got your out and out atheist or your new atheist like Richard Dawkins and uh, Dan Dennett and others like that. And then you've got your old fashioned Fabian socialist type <laughs> atheist like me, who I, I would say, well, I'm pretty atheistic about Christianity, but I, I'm not sure that I'm atheistic about the ultimate ontological metaphysical questions. Uh -huh. if why is there something rather than nothing? I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so at, at some level, I'm more agnostic at that level, but I'm certainly atheistic about Christianity. And uh, to my great surprise, I ran just like that into the ardent new atheists uh, who feel that I'm nothing like as pure and as what is, what is it that I should be. I mean, they're very much like, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses or Christadelphians <laughs> in the sense that, oh my gosh, you know, it isn't that you deny the Trinity, but you deny just this little one <laughs> verse right, in right. John or something right. like that, cast out into the darkness. <laughs> what does Freud call it? The narcissism of small differences. <laughs> yeah. And I'm right. caught on that, friend. Okay, well, well, uh, let's look at the, at, the, at the big picture here. That it, is this quest for consonants, is that meaningful? Because um, a, lo a lot of people want to have harmony but har mm. does harmony yield truth? Yeah. Har harmony can yield ar ar artificial uh, uh, kumbaya <laughs> and, 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 and disguise truth. Yes. Well, uh, first thing is, when I was invited to this conference on consonants, I had to go and Google it up and find out <laughs> what the word meant. Uh, but I, I take it that what we're interested in is the question of whether or not, not that you, you don't have to be religious or a religious believer, uh, presumably you're going to take science somewhat seriously. The question is to what mm. extent can these Met, not so much mesh together, but perhaps work together, live together harmoniously. Now, obviously, on the one hand, you've got your biblical literalists who are going to say no. You've got, on the other hand, you've got your new atheists who are going to say no. So the question is, what about folks of us, you know, more or less in the middle, those who might well be <coughs> Christians, but who nevertheless feel that one must roll with science and work like that. Mm. People like me who are certainly atheistic about Christianity, but who at the same time had a, uh, I had a Quaker upbringing, see the virtues of religion and understand that some of the ultimate metaphysical questions are going to be commitments one way or the other mm. anyhow. Uh, can we live mm. together? We've been called somewhat sneeringly by Richard Dawkins accommodationists, but as the Quakers took on the name of Quaker <laughs> proudly, I am <laughs> an accommodationist, <laughs> long may it live. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, the concept of consonants and theology and the natural sciences uh, gives the impression of symmetry. Mm -hmm. And if anything, theology and the natural sciences are asymmetric. So I, I think there's, a, there's an inherent problem that I have right away about this, this, this appearance of, symmetri of symmetry when it is, is clearly asymmetric. Uh, uh, for sure, uh, 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 theologians, believers have to take into account everything that science says, and science has to take into account nothing that theology says. You agree with that? No, I don't. I think you're dead wrong, and I'm afraid you're going to have to rewrite that paper. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, certainly you're going to get a passing mark in my class. Well, th th uh, that's not particularly what I care about, but I care about truth, not, not getting a passing what, mark what, in your class. Yeah, that's, what they all, that's what they all say, but they, you really do care deep down inside. You really do okay. believe that Jesus is. Uh, no, uh, seriously, I see, you're right, at one level it's asymmetrical. 
I think if science tells you that Adam and Eve did not exist, then religion's <laughs> got to get on with it. So you're right at that level. At another level, though, uh, particularly as somebody like myself who's worked a lot on evolutionary biology, yeah. I do see evolution, Darwinism, uh, for many of us, certainly Dawkins, but probably for me, offering some kind of world picture of origins, of our place, of all of these things, which in many respects I see as deeply religious, if you like, secular religious or something like that. But certainly- Isn't that you, an oxymoron, secular religious? No, well, a lot, a, a, a lot a of things- It's a very phony term. It's like weapons for peace, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and famous Canadians. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, I used to live in Canada, yeah, no, so that's an that. in-joke. Right. Um, but so, no, I, I don't think it is. I think that religion, of course, is notoriously difficult to define. Yeah, of and you say, well, religion's got to have a God. Then what about Buddhists? Uh, religion's got to have uh, uh, ceremonies. What about Quakers? Mm. Religion's got to. And so basically with religion, you have a, a number of characteristics, sure. origins, sure. morality, place of humans, where are we going? These sorts of questions. I see evolution in many respects. Don't mis misunderstand me. Not not in the laboratory, but in the more popular discourse mm -hmm. of people like mm -hmm. Gould and Dawkins and this sort of thing, it does take on this world picture that we're modified, we're modified monkeys rather than modified dirt, as Thomas Henry Huckley mm -hmm. said. Nice. And that matters, that uh, uh, in all sorts of things like sexual relationships and all of these sorts of things, uh, and evolutionary biologists are going to be very interested in the same questions like, say, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. But whereas a Christian is going to approach it from one respect and looking at the Bible and what it says in Leviticus and what, right. what Paul said and these sort of things. An evolutionary biologist is going to be looking at it from the point of view of sexual so selection, it, kin selection. It sounds same, to me, same sort of things though. Sounds to me everything you've said defended what I had, m my, my uh, uh, conjecture, whereas you said I was all wrong and every piece of data you just gave me uh, supported it. Yeah, well, that's what every student says to me too. <laughs> and then we have to go back over the bits and pieces, okay. bit by bit. But But what is the fundamental, mm. is there any fundamental area in mm. which science has to listen to any of the claims of any of the religions that you just gave me? You see, that you're doing it again. Now you're uh, giving uh, okay. me a leading question, uh, which basically is saying, I have to defend this. I want to say, of course, science in many respects trumps religion. Adam and Eve did oh, not okay. exist, right. okay. but you're missing something. You're missing- Tell me getting into the fact that science and religion are so similar. We know that there are differences. Yeah, we know yeah, that yeah. science is going to do certain things that and, and if the religious person believes in these, these are wrong. But what I want to emphasize, and this is for me what consonance means, is seeing where people of good faith from both sides can come together and find meaningful solutions to some of the awful problems we've got in this world, like global warming, like poverty, like war in Africa, these things. And you know, this is not a time for this. It's a, and it's not a time for lovey-dovey, but it's a time to try to work together.